We want the chromatic polynomial and the chromatic number for this graph. Let's take the original graph that here will be called G to keep track of things and add a connection between these two points. That is allowed if we then add the same graph but with those nodes merged. We'll call these new graphs A and B. Then we take A, where we add a connection between these two nodes, giving us the new graphs C and D. And C is given the same treatment, where a connection is added between two points, which can be done if we then add a graph with those very same points conjoined instead. In E, we almost have a situation where all nodes are connected to one another, with the exception of these two. So let's go ahead and add a connection there as well. And that extra connection means that there is an edge from any one node to every other node in M which makes it a fully connected graph with five nodes giving us this. And the same goes for H. The fact that all nodes are connected makes it a fully connected graph with four nodes and this polynomial. If we move on to B, connecting these nodes, we get the graph D that we had up here, plus the new graph J, where J is a tree with three nodes, giving us lambda times lambda minus one to the power of the number of nodes in the tree minus one. And if we add an edge to D here, we get H that we've seen before. And no is fully connected with four nodes plus K that is fully connected with three nodes. Last one is F, where if we add an edge here, we get, even though it may not look like it, but it is actually H plus K. And both of those we already know the polynomial for. Now that everything is broken down, we have a set of equations like g is equal to a plus b, a is c plus d, and so on. Combining all of these is giving us that the full graph g is equal to m plus 4h plus 3k plus j. That means that we should be able to put together the chromatic polynomial for the full graph. We got 1 of m that was the fully connected one with five nodes, 4H that had four nodes, 3K that had three nodes, and one of the J that was a tree with three nodes. Now, if we pair these letters up with their corresponding polynomial, we are starting to get something that makes sense. We'll demessify it a bit by calculating these two expressions and breaking out lambda times lambda minus one. And after some last bits of simple algebraic operations, we finally have what we've been looking for, the chromatic polynomial. To get the chromatic number, we now need to find the lowest positive lambda such that it is equal to or greater than one, something that is not the case for zero or 1, but plugging in 2 as lambda in the chromatic polynomial will result in 2, which is greater than 1, and that means that 2 is a chromatic number.